finally, I built a Voron. That's right. I built a Voron. I actually really did it. Now, for those that don't know, a Voron 3D printer is one that's usually regarded as having a high speed and high quality. It is one that you do have to build yourself, and there's a couple ways you can go about it. One is self-sourcing all the components yourself. The bill of materials is available from the Voron group. The other way to go about it is to utilize a kit, which is what I did. I utilized a V2.4 350 kit from LDO Motors. This all started because Mandic really reached out. He's gonna be in the Pacific Northwest, and he said, hey, Joel, do you wanna build a Voron? And even though I, was, I had a little bit of anxiety around this because I'd never done it before, I said, let's do it. So Alan and I put our skills together and built a Voron. Day one was really just a time lapse because I was running the kids around. So let's join us in the build on day two. Welcome to day two of building a Voron. You know Alan, Alan Mandic. What's up, dude? As you can see, the frame is up. And what else did we do? We started assembly on the Z-axis pulley assemblies. We're working on the motor setups now for the four corner belted Z, since this is a Voron 2.4. That's been a great part of working together in this is like I had Joel earlier putting all the heat press inserts into all the that's parts right, for that's this right. project. Instead of doing them as we get to that step, we've got that all out of the way so we can just keep on rolling through this process. The Nevermore is a charcoal filtration system for inside the chamber. Specifically fits in between the bed rails here. This will filter the air, but keep it inside the chamber. It uses six by three magnets. Oh, look at that. This is your charcoal cartridge. And there's a pair of 5015 blower fans that are lightly modified inside of here. Draws in the air, blows it through the charcoal to filter it. And then it has the exit out here. So it shoots up along the front door of this machine. At this point, I'm putting on a, a, a pulley on a motor, and there's this uh, cool little doohickey gizmo thing that kind of lets you do the proper spacing depending on what the motor's function is. I just completed doing the same thing on the other side. So we're assembling the A and B motors, where the XY of the core XY. That is one of the cool things about this machine. Uh, people get to learn more because there are X and Y axes and a Z axes, but uh, the motors aren't responsible for singular movements within the X and the Y, because the A motor moves diagonal in A and B, or in X and Y, and the B motor moves diagonal. So that's why we can't call them X and Y. Our next steps are actually gonna be getting the extrusions that go into these printed parts. We've got the idlers assembled, we've got the gantry motors assembled. So we basically are assembling the gantry. This is a flying gantry design, so the Z axis on this machine is the gantry traveling up and down, the bed stays completely in position. And a flying gantry really uh, helps contribute to quality of speed because you're not throwing the weight of the printed part around. The gantry itself can be kept at a, at a minimal weight. So in the world of Voron, there is no accidental perfection. That's uh, just a saying I have from when I used to build cars. Because I accidentally got this perfect. Wonderful. <laughs> This is new to me, uh, great idea. We have to lubricate the linear rails for this thing, make sure they're good in grease, so we're moving at high speeds, everything's gonna work properly. And the LDO documentation actually showed me a trick I'd never seen. You have these holes in the backside of the linear rails where they, their fasteners pass through, but they actually allow access inside to the carriage block where the bearings are for this configuration, right there. And then I can take my grease and I can actually go right into that hole and push grease down into there, and it'll get down into the carriage block into the bearing where it needs to be. We're cutting belts. The belts are in for Z and uh, on the A and B motors. The clicky probe for Leveling is in. Clicky Probe, that is going to be the probing system we use for probing the bed on this machine. This part mounts to our tool head. So it'll go down here at the bottom of the tool head. And it has a couple of magnets on the bottom side of it. It uses the magnets as conductors as well. 
These two wires are stripped back and they're actually glued next to two of the magnets. Let's see, can I see that? Oh yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I can see where the wires run. And on the other side, we've got the on-run switch and then the terminals on the switch are touching the two corresponding magnets on this side. But what it does is it just magnetizes onto there. Now it's making an electrical connection and physical connection via the magnets. And it doesn't have to be on the machine at all times. So you do the bed probe mesh and then it'll actually park. There's this little dock piece that it has mounts to this back extrusion here. There'll be pre-programmed coordinates for the tool head to come back to here and actually dock the switch into here and then swipe it off the magnets. And now the switch is not attached to here. So we reduce the weight on the tool head while it's actually printing. And this has also been shown to be very accurate, like more accurate than a BL Touch, Pinda Probe. I've been intending to install one of these on my 2.4, but you're getting it before I am, so. Woohoo! So we got the XY switches oh, in place. XY the, end the stops. Belts are in place. The Nevermore is basically in place. The LDO kit contains LDO approved mods of the typical original Voron V2.4 design. I've been really impressed with the L what LDO has picked to include in this configuration. Between, we've got a, a tool head PCB here that's gonna go mount to the side of the extruder assembly to make it so everything on the tool head wiring wise goes to this PCB and there's only one connection back oh, to the- Oh, so you're not having to home run a bunch of cables back through a chain. Exactly. Oh, 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 so good. If we need to service anything here, it's easy to disassemble and that not have sense. wires dangling all over the place. That's cool. They included the hardware and the switch and everything we need for the clicky probe. Aside from the printed parts, of course, everything else has been here that we need for this project. I guess I got an electronics box to build and you've got a print head to make. Yep. All right, let's do it. I feel more confident in my abilities now. Every moment we spend doing this, it eases my anxiety about possibly doing it myself. So we've broken off a little bit with my confidence. He put me in charge of the electronics on the bottom and he's doing the... Stealth burner tool head, the entire assembly for the extruder. I did that. Alan, I did that. You did that. I did that. I had just done the Z motor wiring and I did the AC side uh, and the Z motor wiring and then wires for A and B. And But you've got on the extruder. The extruder assembly, the Clockwork 2 extruder with the stealth burner shroud with our Joel bot in the middle of it. The what extruder? It's called the Clockwork 2. Why? So, because it's the sequel to the Clockwork 1. I, you walked I had right no into idea. That I just, my goodness. <laughs> As a custom stealth burner that shroud. awesome. So it's the Stealth Burner hot end assembly from the Voron team. It's your Joelbot logo in the middle of the Stealth Burner. I love it. That makes it unique, one of a kind. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. There we go. Uh, welcome to day two and a half, essentially, sure. of the Voron build. Coming into this, I knew it was ambitious. I had suggested this, Joel, let's build a Voron together. But I knew building it even in a week sounded ambitious to me. And then when we kind of landed on two, three days, it was like, oh, I was kind of stressing it a bit. But straight up working with you, Joel, as I saw the progression as you started to get familiar with the way things went together and how they needed to work. And we could not have achieved this if it wasn't for the collaboration. Oh man, I love hearing that. Well, I am, uh, I'm chomping at the bit, as they say, because it looks amazing. We're so close to power on. Let's, let's cross the finish line, at least for that part of it. And let's see if we can't make that hot end dance. What do you say? Day two and a half. Yeah. It's ready to go in three, two, one. Ha ha ha! Can we m move X around? We should be able to. Yeah, yeah! <laughs> Look at it go. These are the first movements of the machine under power. We clearly have our end stop pins configured properly, motor direction configured properly. Honestly, <laughs> this is the first machine I've ever built with that. That's true. <laughs> so that speaks to LDO's uh, config being as accurate as it should be. That's great. <laughs> Uh, 
first thing I need to do is define where the clicky probe is in relation to the entire build volume of the machine. So that's what I just did is just manually jogged it into position, got the values off the main sail so I can put them into the configuration to tell the machine, hey, when you need to pick up the probe, here's where it is. Now, after some testing, movements are, are correct. And I believe you can initiate a home and a quad gantry level. I can indeed. So while you do that, what you're gonna see then is the head do its homing procedure, and then it's going to pick up this probe and do the quad gantry leveling. So essentially, e each corner, it's gonna make an even distance from each corner of the bed. Quad gantry level is done on this machine at the start of any print to ensure that each corner is level with each other. It's gonna go and tap each of the four corners and then you'll see it adjust the, the, the different uh, gantries. It's a trip to see, and that's why we're not cutting right here. It's actually going. Okay, this is the fourth corner. There it goes. Look at that. So there we go. The, the quad gantry leveling has happened, and now it's gonna go through and check its work. So it's not gonna just know it did it, it's gonna check its work. And then once that's done, I believe we can melt things. We can melt some things. Baby's first extrusion. From here, we're gonna wish Alan well. Thanks, dude, I appreciate everything. Collaboration is best. Before you go, if they don't know where to find you, tell them where to find you. At Mandic Really on Pretty much every social media platform, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all that. Sweet. Mandic, really? We'll put links in the description, of course. Yeah. There we go. All right. Get out of here. All right. Bye. Bye. Get out, Get out of here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's going. It's going. It's, it's printing. It's printing. What? Oh, my gosh. It's legitimately printing. In my high bite blue, a boron cube sliced by... Mandy Greeley, thanks man. It's actually printing. Oh, this is awesome. I don't even know what to do now. It's printing. It's, it's printing. Just like that, the print's done. Oh, I'm gonna reach through here and just kind of go. Ah, ah, ah. This looks good. Ah. Two hours later. So I loaded up a Benchy, sized it up quite a bit in Prusa Slicer. Uh, Prusa Slicer does come with a Voron V2.4 350 profile and gave it a print. I loaded it up, gave it a print, and it, it just finished. There are some issues. So there's some layer issues there. This is not a failure. It just brings us to the next step in this journey. So we're calling this do you want to build a Voron part one? Because we went from parts to a machine that works and does spit out prints. I do want to give some thanks though, because a lot of people actually made this possible. First up, Alan Mandic, Mandic really. He is the crazy human who proposed, hey Joel, I can be in Seattle for two days. Do you want to build a Voron? And I was like, yeah, let's friggin' do it. Tag teaming on this build, meant that we were able to get it to this point in 20 hours. So Alan, my friend, thank you so much for proposing the idea of visiting Seattle and helping me on my Voron journey. Uh, next, a big, big thank you to Jason over at LDO Motors. Uh, Jason has been a massive supporter of the show and he's a personal friend of mine just an all around wonderful human. Jason at LDO supplied this kit, the Voron V24 350 kit. So of course I will have a link in the description where you can source your own kit, but the LDO kit is put together so well. It is an amazing kit. A huge thank you to Adam over at the Voron team. Adam is the one that sort of proposed early on wanting me to build a Voron and I had some early parts. Adam put me in touch with the PIF, Print It Forward program. So Print It Forward is a Voron program that allows you to get Voron parts for a good price if you want to build yourself a Voron kit. I'd also like to thank Taylor Landry. My buddy Taylor, I gave him a call one evening because Alan and I were having an issue with something and he picked up, I was like, hey dude, you were always the machine guy, that technical 
engineering guy at Matter Hackers. Maybe you can help out. And he's like, Avoron, sure, let's do it. And finally, Taylor, the other Taylor, who you know as Nero 3D, Mr. Streaming Voron himself, uh, provided some valuable intel in how to build this and helped me troubleshoot some of the, the low-level things with Raspberry Pi and, and deep within the operating system of Clipper and, and on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, Taylor, I couldn't have done it without you, man. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. With that, do you want to build a Voron part one? It's done! There's no more meme! There's no more meme! There's no more, hey Joel, when are you ever gonna build a Voron? I did, I did, and I'm really excited about it. As you can see, a lot has happened since we filmed those previous parts. I've done some pretty impressive prints on this machine. I've actually got the side panels on. I've done some configuration and calibration, some, and I'm really looking forward to doing more of it. If you have any questions at all about this build, my settings, the slicer I'm using, the prints I've done, leave those down in the comments and I'll do my best to get to all of them. Tag me on socials if you have questions. The Voron and the experience I've had with this machine is unlike anything else and it's easily creeping up to being the machine that I trust the most, want to use the most, that I just find myself thinking about when I'm not around it. I'm not even kidding. Thanks for being a part of this journey and thanks for being there when I finally built a Voron. So happy about this. If you made this far, it's awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. Build all the Vorons. <laughs> and as always, high five.